And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Follow. You try to get a lot of followers on Twitter or on Facebook? Well, this is more like Bill and Ted. In fact, I'm kind of surprised I didn't call this the Bill and Ted Adventure Game, because in this game, you are jumping around in time, grabbing famous people and returning them to the spots that they're supposed to go to. Just exactly where does Winston Churchill need to go? Where does Abraham Lincoln need to go? Where does the Kraken need to go? I guess that's a famous thing in history. Well, this game will allow you to do that. So this is a vortex tile that's in the middle of the table. Each person is going to put a pawn on that tile. You're going to have a huge pile of other tiles nearby, as well as a deck of follower cards. And you need some 10-sided dice. Now in this game, on a player's turn, they have an action that they can do. They can move, they can explore, they can collect, return, or steal. Now some actions require you to roll a die. If you ever roll a die and it's successful, you then get to do another turn. So let's say you're going to explore. So I'm going to go to the next door. I turn over the top tile. It's Caribbean Cove. And in Caribbean Cove is Archimedes. And he needs to go to the bath, which is not this. So um, let's say I want to go here. I'm going to move into this spot. And I want to roll a six or higher. I rolled a two. That is a failure. So uh, if you have Archimedes, see each person in front of them, is going to have this. And if I pick him up, if I'm in the spot successfully, I can pick up Archimedes and add him to my active followers. Since he's blue, in the future, if I'm on a blue spot and I need to move from one to the other or whatever, I can roll two dice and pick the higher. However, when you're rolling two dice, if you ever roll doubles, that's an automatic failure, even if it would normally be a success. So you are going to be looking for the bath. So maybe I'll turn this over. It's the Himalayan hideout. And there's Queen Victoria. Or, oh, there is the bath. And in the bath is Isaac Newton, who needs to get to the apple tree. And you'll notice that there's, we got Noah and T-Rex and Nessie, William Shakespeare, Robin Hood, Santa Claus, Winston Churchill, Genghis Khan, Kraken, Neil Armstrong, Cleopatra, the Yeti, Billy the Kid, King Arthur, Edward, Hillary, Buddha, the Mammoth, Blackbeard, the Alien, Julius Caesar, Charles Darwin, Minotaur, Albert Einstein, Hercules, Albert, Abraham Lincoln, Napoleon, and Count Dracula. Several of these people are real, and a few are maybe or maybe not. Okay, and so then you have the same stuff as you turn over these tiles. And there's also going to be vortex tiles. When you find them, you'll be able to jump from one to the other. So on a turn, you can explore to a spot next to you, and you can pick where you're going to put it. And then when you move on it, you can continue to roll. So I could easily move here, but then I would continue to roll. I'd have to roll six or higher to pick somebody up. Um, if I'm going from one vortex to another vortex, I have to make a success roll rolling the number on the vortex. You can also pick somebody up, but remember picking someone up doesn't require a roll, and dropping someone off doesn't require a roll, so when you do those, your turn is over. When you drop someone off, you just stick them underneath your board. You can also steal from somebody else. When you steal, you're just going to roll, and depending on the color, that's a success number. So if someone else has um, Noah in theirs, and I can steal Noah by rolling a six or higher from them, and then I can run around with him. The first person to get one of all five colors is the winner. So if I get the Kraken, William Shakespeare, the T-Rex, Nessie, and Noah, and I successfully return them to Noah's Ark, Laramidia, Loch Ness, the Globe Theater, and the Inky Depths, I win the game. Now this game has two 10-sided dice, but they really should have put one in for each player because you are constantly rolling on your turn. And so the dice are being passed around, passed around, passed around, passed around, and rolling. Now, I know that they decided that they wanted to roll 10-sided dice in this. I'm not really sure what the reasoning was behind that. 10-sided dice are fun to roll, but this game revolves all around a lot of luck. Now, first of all, I should mention, I do like the artwork of the game. I mean, even the cover itself here, as you see the different characters there, I enjoy that. I think the different locations look pretty neat. So, I mean, here's just the apple tree. That looks good. And let's see here. The vortex looks pretty neat. And the wild, wild west. I think they did a good job at that. And the whole thing, the colors are easy to differentiate. The whole thing looks good on the table. And the tiles are thick and of good quality. But the game is just a 
pile of pile luck is what I would call this one because really you're just moving to a spot. Hey, it's Isaac Newton. Oh, there's the apple tree. Great. Oh, I got Nessie. Oh, it's going to take me forever to find where to drop her off. Oh, there's where she needs to be dropped off. What? You stole her from me? I can't get her back from you. And so after a while, people are stealing to stop someone else from winning. They're stealing to get the person so they can roll two dice. And it just seems... It just seems too lucky, the game overall. I shouldn't say it seems. It really is. It, what The car draws luck, the tile draws luck, and the die rolls are luck. And it's the same thing over and over again. Go to pick up and deliver. Go pick up the person over here. Go drop them off over here. But in the meantime, you can steal them from each other, which isn't a lot of fun. Or maybe for the stealer it is. And then possibly never find a spot until the very end as you build these tiles around the board. In a multiplayer game, let's say you're playing two or three, you'll be fine. But you play the more players, five or six, your stuff's going to get stolen all the time. And then when someone steals it from you, it's going to be stolen back from them, which will make the game go longer than it needs to be. So the game is a funny idea. I like the whole shifting through time aspect of it. In the long run, no, I can't really recommend this one. It's, it's an interesting idea, and the game isn't all bad, but I find the amount of luck in it actually makes it boring, which is too grad, but bad, a little bit of that, because it's such a pretty package. Dice Tower Judgment, too random. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Huh?